Somebody lift your hands as we celebrate the greatness of our God. He's great and he's greatly to be praised. It's the worship song that says this, our God is awesome. Hello and welcome to Nehemiah Bible Church, our second online service. Um, good morning and thank you for joining us. We're walking through the book of Acts this morning. We're continuing and we hope that it will be encouragement to you. 
to cling to the Lord in these times. Uh, we pray if there's anything that you need, please let um, one of the elders or deacons know, um, your small group leader, definitely reach out to them. But uh, we want to welcome you. We want to encourage you at this time. I was reading this morning in Ephesians 4, and I wanted to share this with you. So starting in verse starting in verse 14, I'm sorry, verse 15. Um, Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Saints, uh, as I read this verse, um, it may be hard to be joined together at this time. We're doing so much more virtually, and, and I encourage you to continue uh, reaching out to one another by text uh, and, and by phone calls. Just we need to hear each other's voice and, and see each other's face on video. But I want to stress verse 16, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped when each part is working properly. My encouragement, my challenge to you this day as we find ourselves in the middle of March, um, is is every is each part working properly? And what does that look like for you? Where you are, where you are today? Um, if you're at home, um, if you're quarantining yourself with your family, um, what does it mean that each part is working properly? And it is our prayer that the elders, the deacons, um, all the members of, of Nehemiah that we would be working properly, um, that we would be serving the saints at Nehemiah and, and the Brookside area. Um, so that's my encouragement for you today. Thank you and have a great day. Good morning, Nehemiah. Uh, it's good to be with you all this morning. Uh, let us join our hearts together and worship the Lord. Yes. <laughs> Peace like a 
Good morning, Nehemiah Bible Church. Uh, it's a pleasure to be able to be in front of you this morning um, as we deliver God's word and his message through Pastor Corey. But I wanted to take a few minutes and let you know where we are with our funding for PIP and our general offering. So hopefully we're able to put up a couple charts that each of you, wherever you're located, logged in can see. The first one, is where we stand today as of March 21st on our general offering. We had a goal of $93,000 uh, to come in over four months. That was December through March. And so far um, through March 20th, we have received $76,117. Um, we still have a couple of weeks left in the month and we will continue to report against that but as you can see we are some seventeen thousand six hundred dollars short we had a particularly low month of giving in february and obviously with church being shut down uh, march is a little slow i also want to tell you where we are with pip and that is on the next page here bear with me one second and our goal there is $40,500 is what we said is our fleece that we wanted to bring in. And so far we have collected $36,612. We are only 3,888 behind. I do want to remind you though that the decision to move forward on whether we borrowed additional funds, regardless of when we might do that, uh, was based on two things. One is that we did, in fact, collect the 40500 But second, that we did not impact our general offering givings. Uh, in other words, we didn't see those decrease as we saw our goal achieved in PIP. Again, um, we will report this each week. Uh, please continue to give faithfully if you can. Um, we do have our online to the planning system capability, and uh, if you don't have that and can log into that, you can still mail a check to directly to Nehemiah Bible Church. We're still opening the mail and making deposits, so thank you for that. Uh, if you don't uh, have an opportunity um, to give in any way right now because of current circumstances just pray please pray that our church uh, continues to um, maintain its building pay its staff and continue to fund that which is absolutely necessary thank you and god bless our scripture reading today comes from acts 8 26 through 40. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south along the road, which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. So he arose and went, and behold a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning, and sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake his chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture which he read was this. 
He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shear is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask of you, of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at this scripture, preached Jesus to him. Now as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, see, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and he baptized him. Now, when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught Philip away so that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus. And passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Acts 8, 26 through 40. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Good morning, saints. We are continuing in our video virtual church. It's, uh, yeah, it's really interesting to say the least. As we continue with this modality, just want to remind each and every one of you, number one, stay connected. Number two, be prepared. Uh, if you've been watching my Daily videos, one of the uh, common threads in everything has been the fact that the earth pains are happening and we know the Lord is coming and that we need to be prepared. What I'm not saying is when it's happening. I've had a few people ask me, is this it? Is this the end? Well, I think the Bible makes it very clear that no man knows the time or the season. I mean, no man knows the day. Right, but we will know the season. It'll be really clear to us what's going on in uh, in society, what's going on in uh, nature, and I think we see a whole lot happening around us that makes it very clear that, as it was in the days of Noah, as it will be, but there is the earthquakes, the famine, the wars, the rumors of wars, the infighting. Uh, and, and I just think it's important for us to hold on to that. Amen? All right, very good. So as we uh, start our time together in the Word, I'd like to open in a word of prayer and prepare us to hear from the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Grace the Heavenly Father, we come to you as always in the name of your Son, Christ Jesus, thanking you for the privilege to boldly come before your throne as your children, hearing clearly your Word, asking that you transform us, prepare us, use us as you see fit. In the midst of a perverse generation, as the world goes through chaos and turmoil, we stand on the unchanging, unwavering reality of who you are. So Master, we would just ask that you would continue to build us up together, that you would reinforce um, our resolve, our faith, that we would stir one another, stay connected, be the body as you intended it to be, that we do not forsake the gathering of ourselves together in whatever means possible, Lord. And as we go through this, knowing that the world will be ripe for the gospel, that we are preparing ourselves. We love you and praise you so much. Speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, so it's kind of hard to not acknowledge what's going on in the process of all that we do. Um, and so, Lord willing, your families, your uh, your jobs, everything that's in your purview has been augmented, but not without the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. 
All right, the deacon, the deacon. Uh, as we continue our walk through the book of Acts, we come to, you know, right after looking at Simon the sorcerer, which, by the way, last week when we talked about it, the scripture doesn't say another thing about him. It moved, Luke moves the narrative immediately to another incident with uh, Philip, the evangelist. And it's really interesting how the Lord is using him. Here are our takeaways. Knowledge without understanding. Knowledge without understanding. And can you explain Jesus to others? Can you explain Jesus to others? And the steps of a righteous man. The steps of a righteous man. Let's begin here in Acts chapter 20, excuse me, Acts chapter 8, verse 26. Go where I send you. Verse 26. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go towards the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. So he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury, had come to Jerusalem to worship. So here we find this Ethiopian eunuch who is in Jerusalem to worship. There are some key things that I want to point out here I think are um, really important that we grab a hold of. Number one, he was a man of great prominence. Not only that, um, he was right under, or he was in charge of the things that belonged to Candace. Candace was a name given to the queen of Ethiopia, but it was more of a title than a name, like Pharaoh or Emperor. She was Candace. And so here we have this man of Ethiopian descent who is a eunuch who has come to Jerusalem to worship. Now remember, all of your proselytes, all of those who are um, engaged with the things of God, have come to Jerusalem because it's the time of the Passover. And then they stayed for the festival of tents, or what we now know as Pentecost. So you have these events that are happening, and, it, and afterwards, he's even stayed longer. Because as you remember, the Church of Acts had come together, and then Paul, or forgive me, Saul, at the time before he became Paul, was persecuting the church, and then it was dispersed. It was after this dispersal that Philip was in Samaria and was engaging with the people there, and they came to Christ. So after this has all happened, we come to this point where the story picks up about this Ethiopian eunuch who is still in the region. Here in verse 28, we, we continue. And he had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning and sitting in his chariot he was reading Isaiah the prophet then the spirit said to Philip go near and overtake this chariot so here's another piece that we want to take a look at if you don't mind just want to kind of highlight some of the some of the interesting things on the edges uh, he's in his chariot not Candace's chariot but his chariot so he was a man of means and prominence and as he was going, um, the Lord sends Philip and tells him to overtake this chariot or to go near the chariot and get close to it. And without hesitation, Philip is doing all of these things. One of the things you don't hear in the passage is that Philip was pondering. He was thinking about or questioning the Lord. Are you sure this is where you want me to go? Gaza, the strip, the road, there's nobody out there. Why would you send me over there? You don't hear any of these questions. Uh, a couple other times in scripture that we see no hesitation. And oh, hold on. So here, here's my point before I go any further. The fact that there's no hesitation should be something that for each of us, we pay close attention to. How many times have we been prompted by the Lord to do something but hesitate? Or go as far as to even say, maybe that's not really what the Lord wants me to do. We throw out um, fleeces, if you will, or we even find ourselves being unsure as to what everyone else will think or what will others do. 
We want to be careful to be sensitive to the calling of the Lord, to the pulling of the Lord, but not at the same time throwing off restraint to those who are your spiritual leaders who have who have been given instruction by the Lord or are trying to lead the flock or lead everyone in a particular direction, making sure that you balance that, knowing that the Lord isn't double-minded. He wouldn't tell the leaders one thing and tell you another. Amen? All right, here we go. So, here we are. So, no hesitation. Here we see in Genesis chapter 12, starting at verse 1, uh, a familiar story that uh, I believe will help to highlight what we're talking about. Now, the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Then Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. Here is a man who is totally uprooted, not at 20 years old, not at 19 years old, but he was 75 years old when the Lord told him, I want you to leave everything. Your way of life as you know it is over. And I need you to do something different. As we go through the process of hearing the Lord call us or moving us or transitioning things in our lives, let us not be resistant to it, but attentive to what the Lord is calling us to. As I have said before, and I'm probably going to say a thousand more times, these circumstances in our world have made people's hearts soft to the gospel and we need to make sure that we're going and we are responsible for the for the calling that's been put on each and every one of our lives and not one of us is hesitant in doing what the Lord has called us to do also here in Matthew chapter 4 verses starting at verse 18 we see another familiar narrative that I think uh, you all will find quite comforting and Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So they immediately left their nets and followed him. Here they are being asked to leave a way of life, their career, their family business, their means of making a living. As the Lord has said to them, I need you to do something else. They immediately did so without hesitation. Now, let me tell you, there's a lot of people who are going through this transition and they're unsure as to what is next. Well, let me tell you for sure what I know is next. Whatever the Lord has for you to do. That, I can tell you without any hesitation, is next. And that is where your focus needs to be in the process of all of this. Just as we see Philip being called, saying, hey, go down here. Here he is in Samaria. He's with the Samaritans. He's got this ministry. It seems to be going well. Now the Lord has called him to do something else. Here we have Abram, who was called out of his country. Without hesitation, he did this. And now we have Peter and his brother, Andrew, who are called to stop what they're doing and follow Christ. This is where I hope your hearts are, with great anticipation of what the Lord will do. We're not walking around in sorrow and woe and um, anxiousness, trepidation, 
fear, anxiety, none of that is rolling around in our hearts. But we're focused on, okay, Lord, you are sovereign. You are in control. What is it that you would have me to do next? And that is the focus. But on the other hand, we have another narrative that I think we also need to um, put our eyes on. Here in Matthew chapter 19, starting at verse 20, we have, a, we have a very different story. Here at verse 20, it says this, The young man said to him, All these things I have kept from my youth. What do I still lack? The question that this rich young man had for the Lord is, what do I need to do to be on the top level? What do I need to do to be right? So Jesus told him, follow the commandments. He's like, I've done that. I've done everything that I need to do. I've been a good boy. Jesus understanding what was in this man's heart says something to him that I think a lot of us are hearing right now. And Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, go, sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. Then Jesus said to his disciples, As surely I say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then could be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men... This is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So all that is being said here in the midst of all of this is if the Lord is calling you to go, if he creates the circumstances around you, they're beyond your control. It's not like you have any control over anything. Uh, <clears throat> you never did. It's not like you have any control over anything around you. But the Lord is now orchestrating your movements. Rather than sitting around sorrowfully trying to figure out what to do or resisting, embrace and look as to what the Lord will be moving into your life next with great anticipation of the Lord's movement. Great anticipation of what he is doing in our midst. Understanding as children of light, we've been called to understand this. Let us be diligent. Do not cling to the things of this world. Do not cling to the things of this world. Do not cling to the things of this world, but be lost in the service to the master and loving one another and being mindful of the needs that are around you knowing that the Lord will also care for your needs in the midst of all of this. Back to our text. So as the Lord told Philip to overtake this chariot, remember he's doing all of this without any hesitation. Here in Acts chapter 8, verse 30. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, how can I? unless someone guides me. And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. You got a couple of things here that are that are really interesting. So as Peter overruns this chariot, as he comes up to it and listens, he hears the Ethiopian eunuch reading out of the book of Isaiah, which means he was reading aloud. So it is customary during this time to read out loud. It wasn't an uncommon thing. There are some who think he may have even been reading loud enough, not just reading out loud and reading to himself, but reading loud enough that his driver could hear, 
he was reading out loud to his driver as well. Uh, we don't know that that's true. We don't have anything in the uh, passage that says that. That's a very eisegetical engagement into this passage. But he was reading out loud to the point where Philip could hear him and then asked him the question, do you understand what you're reading? So my question to all of us is going to be, are you able to communicate the gospel to those who have questions? Are you able to understand the gospel enough that you can process it, engage with it, and then present it to someone from multiple vantage points? There are going to be several opportunities laid out before us as we go for the gospel and are we prepared? As I said yesterday in my video, I'm going to start putting out some things that uh, hopefully will help uh, those of you who aren't comfortable with giving the gospel to be able to do so. And as we do, then maybe you can share these with others, but utilize them for yourself, understanding how to get to, from almost any vantage point, back to Christ, all roads leading back to the gospel. The other thing that I want to point out is the humility of the Ethiopian eunuch. In, in understanding that someone has walked up on him, this man has just come up to his chariot and asked him, hey, do you understand what you're reading? The normal response for some of us would be, excuse me, who are you? Who are you talking to? I mean, are you in my business? That, that, that's not, that's, that wasn't his response. His heart was already wide open, ready to receive, looking for understanding. Remember, the fields will be ripe for the gospel. It's not like you got to pry into someone's heart to pour it in. The hearts will be wide open. Be ready. Be prepared. Who is this man? Who is this man? Here in Acts chapter 8, verse 32. The place in scripture which he read was this. As the Ethiopian eunuch was reading, this is what he was reading when Philip came upon him. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before its shearer is silent. So he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. Here he's reading about this man who is humiliated. Justice is taken away from him. He's led as a sheep. He didn't say anything. These horrible things were happening. And he's quoting from Isaiah 53, verses 7 and 8. But what's interesting is another piece that I just kind of want to turn over for you as we engage with this passage. Remember, this Ethiopian eunuch was in Jerusalem to worship. He was in Jerusalem to worship because it was the time of the Passover. It was the time of the Feast of the Tents. But there's something here that without an understanding, you're going to totally miss. And I just want to point this out. Here in Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 1 and 2, we see something that is going to give just a little more enlightenment to what's happening between Philip and the Ethiopian unit. Here in Deuteronomy 23, verse 1 and 2, we read, He who is emasculated by crushing or manipulation shall not enter the assembly of the Lord. One of illegitimate birth shall not enter the assembly of the Lord. Even to the 10th generation, none of his descendants shall enter the assembly of the Lord. So this is what is law for them. This is what the 
children of Israel had as their way of doing things. So let's back up. This is an Ethiopian eunuch who has come to worship. Let me say it again. Eunuch. One who is emasculated by either crushing or manipulation. Whatever way you become a eunuch, it doesn't matter. You cannot come into the assembly, which means he was not a full proselyte. He was not fully allowed to engage with the things that all the other Jewish believers were, in, were allowed to engage with. So why was he there? If he can't fully engage because of what's happened to him, then why is he coming? Because for him, it didn't take away the fact that his heart was still with Yahweh or Jehovah. He was still there. There was something that was giving him hope. Something that I think we need to engage with as well. Which is another text in Isaiah. Here in Isaiah chapter 56, and we're going to read verses 3 through 5. I think it will help us to understand some of the dynamics in this engagement that we're looking at. Here in Isaiah chapter 56, 3 through 5, we see this. Do not let the son of the foreigner who has joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord has utterly separated me from his people. Nor let the eunuch say, Here I am, a dry tree. For thus says the Lord to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbath and who choose what pleases me and holds fast my covenant. Even to them I will give my house and within my walls a place and a name better than the sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. He understood that this God who all the rest could engage with in a very intimate way through the law had spoken out that if you in your heart, circumcised in your heart, dedicated and committed to me in your heart, do the things at the level in which you can, with an intensity by which you can, follow my and keep my covenant. I will give to you a name better than the sons and daughters. Imagine reading this in Isaiah. He is reading this book because this book has for him hope. These passages have for him a hope that for others, those who would have treated him in society a certain way, had he paid attention to what they were saying, he would be hopeless. But looking into the word of God, he found hope. His heart was wide open and prepared, right and ready for the gospel, understanding that there was hope for him because the scripture said so. So when Philip found him, here he is reading the book of Isaiah. And as I said, he is now in Isaiah chapter 53, reading verses 7 and 8. And it's important to note that this book would have held for this eunuch a very special place. And here he is reading it. I hope the word of God has a special place for each and every one of you. And as you study the word, you are preparing yourself not only to give the gospel to yourself, but being prepared to give the gospel to others. Amen? Amen. So here we are back in our passage here in Acts chapter 8, verse 34. So the eunuch said to Philip, so the eunuch answered, forgive me, answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or some other man? The Ethiopian eunuch was not putting together the events around the Passover in which Christ had been crucified. 
He was not putting together the events of what was happening with the people of God. Somehow or another, he didn't understand what was going on. Somehow or another, he wasn't putting it together. But the Lord, knowing his servant, knowing his heart, sent someone to him. You might be that person who sent to that individual whose heart is wide open. Let me continue. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at this scripture right here in Isaiah and preached Jesus to him, starting right where he was. As I said, there's going to be multiple vantage points that you'll have to give the gospel. Do you know how to get back to Christ from wherever you are, whether it be science, whether it be politics, whether it be whatever, famine, pestilence, corona, whatever it is. Do you know how to get back to Christ? That's a key element. Moved by the Spirit. Moved by the Spirit. It's just so wonderful to see Philip preaching Christ to someone whose heart is wide open. Moved by the Spirit. Verse 36, Acts 8, 36. Now, as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, see, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? As Philip communicated the gospel to him, he also communicated baptism. He also communicated to him commitment and dedication. He, he communicated to him the full understanding of giving your life to Christ. It wasn't a partial presentation, but a full presentation. Well, how do you know this, Pastor Corey? I'm glad you asked. Because as soon as they got to some water, he said, what's hindering me from being baptized? Which means that it had been explained to him. That's how I know. And understanding what it meant to fully commit your life to Christ, making Jesus your master, making him your Lord. What prevents me from being baptized? Verse 37, then Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He is the Messiah. He is the Christ. He is the Savior. I believe, I believe. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and he baptized him. Now, when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught Philip away. So the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. Right after he gives his life to Christ, Philip gives him the breakdown of the gospel, what it means, who Christ is, what he has done. They're riding around in the chariot. He's in, he's in Isaiah, giving him the word. It's landing on his heart. He's baptized. The Spirit of God takes him away. He's gone. But the Ethiopian eunuch went away rejoicing, knowing that his life for eternity would be found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Knowing that his life for eternity would be found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, the scripture doesn't say anything else about this Ethiopian eunuch. Many have speculated that it was because of him that the gospel went into that region, but we don't have any record of that and there's no way of confirming it. But we do know this. The Bible says that the word of God will not return void. And there is a reason why the Lord captured this event for us. If for nothing else, then we would know that there should be nothing in this world or in this life that keeps us from moving wherever the Lord sends us. And we need to be ready in season and out of season to give an answer for the hope that we have. And lastly, 
that if the Lord, if the Lord should ask us to let go of anything, we should be more than willing to do it. Knowing that there will be those who may have a knowledge of things but don't have understanding, we need to be poised and ready to answer the questions. I've had phone calls after phone calls after phone calls. People that I haven't talked to in a very long time that are calling me, asking me, what is going on? What should we do? Let me tell you something. Each and every one of you who's known as a believer, people are going to ask you and they expect you to have answers. They expect you who know the most high God to be able to answer what is going on. And I know you are prepared to give the answer. If you're not, get prepared. Let's conclude. But Philip was found at Azotus. And passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Here's Philip now found in another region and then made his way to Caesarea. But on his way, on his way, as he went between point A and point B, this is what he did. He preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. As you go, as you move from point A to point B, we need to be representing Christ. Let me just say it. Here is the greatest transformation in human history up to this point. You have Pentecost that has come and the Holy Spirit has come upon men and women and they knew something was happening. They understood that God was doing something and in the process of it all, their hearts were Trying to give the gospel. So, is there another time that you can think of that profound things are happening? Unprecedented action? Unparalleled upheaval? Where people everywhere are abuzz? Can you think of another time like that? Let's ponder that. Now, right now is happening. So as we go, as we engage, let us be on our game. Our takeaways. Knowledge without understanding. Knowledge without understanding. Reading the word only is not enough. We must study. It's great that you guys are having devotion. It's great that you're reading the word of God. But do you know what you're reading? Philip asked a, he asked a very good question. Do you understand what you're reading? Are you taking advantage of all the tools around you to gain a solid understanding of what you're engaging with? Are you being discipled? Are you asking questions? Are you getting into your word? Are you taking notes? Are you researching? Are you making sure that you understand? Are you prepared to help someone else understand? Can you explain Jesus to others? From any starting point, we need to be able to get to Jesus. I've asked people this question before, right? Do you know how to get to your house from here? You know, you can put people anywhere in Indianapolis and they'll go, yeah, we're on the west side, so we need to do this. We're on the east side, we need to do this. We're on the south side, we need to do this. From any vantage point in life, do you know how to get to Jesus? Can you take someone from point A to point B? I it's really simple. We need to know how. We must know how. 
And lastly, the steps of a righteous man, the steps of a righteous man, the Lord may send us anywhere. At any given time, he can interrupt our lives. Is it okay if he interrupts your life? Is it okay? Or if he interrupts it, do you find yourself in woe and misery? Is it okay if the Lord is sovereign? Is it okay that his word says that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose? Is it okay for him to interrupt your life because the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God? The Lord may send us anywhere and we must be willing to go. Let us not be reluctant in doing what the Lord has called us to. There are those who are in deep despair. There are those who are struggling with what's happening. They are anxious and not poised. Those of you who are strong in the faith, please make yourself available to those whose faith may be challenged through all of this that you would build them up in the word, that you would give them the reorientation to look back across to the hills from where their help comes and not focusing down on the issues of this world. Please, please. If you are here and this is your first time engaging with us, we just want to say uh, we're glad to have you. Um, I know this is a really crazy way of engaging uh, but we want to just want to say we're really glad to have you um, there's a uh, I think we're gonna have a, a link or something coming up here very soon that's gonna allow us to really capture who you are get to know you get some things out to you so uh, there's a comment section below so if you want to shoot over uh, some information uh, just making a comment your address or whatever comes up. So you don't have to post your address. You don't have to post any information. Just putting some information in the comment section will allow us to capture it without you publishing it to everyone, I think. I'm not sure. Don't start me the line. So anyway, but if you want some information, just let us know and we'll work on getting that to you. Also, uh, everyone, please be in prayer for Mira. She's having some, uh, some issues with her teeth. She's hurt her mouth. And she is sore. So Mira, if you would, pray for that precious little girl uh, as her parents kind of sort through how to help them. You know that uh, they're now saying only emergency things are being worked on. And for Mira, I'm sure this is an emergency. So just be in prayer and continue to pray for Cliff as, uh, as he is recovering. He's doing well. And we praise the Lord for that. Amen. Uh, amen. Uh, just also for the small groups, there's a notification that's coming out. So you all will be able to join your small groups if you're in one. Uh, and so just click on the link and we'll all be meeting together virtually. More video. And by the way, you know, um, I miss you. So I'm just going to say it. So it would be really good to be in the small groups today, just having the opportunity for us to engage with one another. All right, let me close in prayer. Love you with all my heart. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Cutting down to the joints, the marrow, into our intentions, our hearts, Lord. We are being exposed. Lord, may what? gets revealed, is found to be centered in you and you alone. For those of us who are struggling, who have found ourselves clinging on to the world and the things in this world, Lord, please pry them from our hands, focus us on you, and let us be found lost in you. Please, Master, your children, 
Some of them are struggling. Others of us are in great anticipation trying to keep our excitement down. We're not excited about people dying. We're not excited about people getting sick. We're not excited about people being hurt. We're not excited about the misery that some are going through. But we are excited that we are getting closer to the end and all of this will stop. And you will bring an end to all tears, all suffering, all hurt. And you will renew Redeem, restore everything. Daddy's coming home. Lord, let our hearts grab a hold of that and be found faithful. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and have a wonderful day.